In this video, we're going to cover how to convert numbers from decimal into binary. Now, we already know how to understand a positional number. So when we're looking at a number in a, a base other than decimal, like binary or base 3 or base 17, we already saw that by writing it out in its coefficient base exponent form, we could determine the equivalent decimal value. So we fundamentally know how to go from an arbitrary base to decimal. But now what we need to do is start going from decimal to other bases. And we're going to do that first with decimal to binary. So uh, there are two ways to do this. The first of these two is really just for small numbers. So let's start with a small number, uh, say 47. We have 47 in decimal, and we want to convert that into binary, base 2. Right? And so we need a mechanism to do it. Uh, this first approach is sort of like process of elimination. What we're going to do is take our basic understanding of what a binary number is uh, and positional numbers, specifically the fact that uh, in each of the different positions we have these values that increase from 1 in the 0th bit position. I'll add the positions as well here for us. So we have position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Uh, and the values for those is 2 to the 0, which is 1, 2 to the 1, which is 2, 2 to the second power, which is 4, and then just keep multiplying by 2. 8, 16, 32, and so on. Now, we can keep going, right? 32, 64, 128, uh, 256, 512, 1024. We can, we can just keep on going and going. But at some point, we start to slow down mentally, just rattling off that number multiplied by 2. More importantly, we don't have them all in a long list in our brain. Uh, pretty quickly, you'll internalize the sequence of numbers 1 up to 32, maybe even 64, maybe even up to 1024 uh, for, the, for very fast recall. Uh, and in doing so, we can apply this particular method because we can just sort of think about powers of 2. So what I'm going to do and why I call this process of elimination is if I'm going to represent a binary equivalent to the decimal number 47, then that thing is going to have a bunch of zeros and ones. And in each bit, for, uh, in each bit position where there's a 1, we're going to take uh, a 1 times that particular coefficient. So say there was a 1 here in bit 4, the bit that's worth 16. That means I would be adding to my uh, equivalent value if I was converting from the binary back to decimal. I'd be adding 1 times 16. So that means 16 would have to be a part of creating that number. But uh, if I start way, way off to the left, with some exorbitantly high value, and I'm trying to come up with the number 47, I know that the bits that are worth a whole lot aren't going to have ones in them, because if they did, like say a bit was uh, the, the 1024 bit. If I thought the 1024 bit had a one in it, then I, I would be totally wrong, because no amount of zeros that I put in the rest of these bit positions would ever subtract anything from the 1024 to get me back down to 47. So by process of elimination, what I do is I start with some high-valued bit position, and I think about what its value is. And if that value is too big uh, or bigger than the number that I need, then I know there's going to be a zero there. And I sort of mentally think until I find a bit position uh, that is below this number, and it's the first one that's below this number or, or equal to it. Right? Because then I can put a 1 in. So, um, well, 32 is below 47. But I should really consider what was to the left of 32. That would be 32 times 2, 64. So I know there's going to be a 0 in the 64 bit because if I had a 1 there, I'd never be able to get down to 47. Which means 32 is the, f is the first highest bit that is equal to or less than the target number in question. So we must have to add 32 to reach 47. So I'm going to put a 1 in that bit position. 
Now, because I've added 32 uh, to whatever this number is, however many zeros and ones I have over there, then I've accounted for 32 out of the 47 individual ones that constitute 47. So now I know that I have 47 minus 32 left to figure out. So that's 15. So with the remaining bits from position 4 through 0, I need to come up with a binary for 15. So let me think through this. Uh, I need 15. Let me look at 16. 16 is bigger than 15, so I must have a 0 here. 8 is less than or equal to 15, and since it's the first one I found, I'm going to put a 1 there. But because I put a 1, I've now got 32 and I've got 8 more. So out of the 15 remaining, I just accounted for 8 of them, so if I subtract 8 from 15, I'll get 7. Now I need to come up with uh, 7 more out of the remaining values, 4, 2, and 1. Now when I get low like this, very quickly I see, well, 4 plus 2, if I put 1's there, would be 6, plus 1 would be 7, so I can see that all three of these are going to end up being 1's. But we'll go ahead and walk through the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to look at 4. 4 is less than 7 that I'm trying to reach, so I'm going to put a 1 in the 4. That means I have 7 minus 4 left, which is 3. So I've got to count for 3 now. 2 is less than 3, so I'll put a 1 there. I've accounted for 2, so I have 1 left. Uh, 1 is less than or equal to 1, so I'll put a 1 here. And that accounted for the 1, and you'll see I end up with 0. Since I have 0 left, if there were any other bit positions off here to the right, I would just fill them up with zeros because it's clear uh, they are not a part of reaching the original sum because there are no, uh, there, there is no number left after I account for these bits that have ones in them. Right? So it's a kind of process of elimination. Let's do another number this way. Well, let's say I want to do another small number like, um, let's see, what about 39? 39, that's a relatively small number. Okay. So I can think back through this again. What I'm really looking for is what of these values can I add together that will add up to 39? But I always start with the highest order value. I need 32 to get to 39. If I only add all these other ones up, I'm just going to get 31. We understand this because of the range of positional numbers given a specific number of bit. So uh, I must require 32. Then I'll have 7 left, and 7 is 4 plus 2 plus 1, and all remaining bit positions will be 0, including theoretically you know, zeros out to infinity in front of this. So this is one way, when you have a small number, that you can quickly and mentally convert from decimal to binary. Now, the second thing that we need to do is convert from decimal to binary for large numbers. We need a more mechanical process that we can use. And it would work for small numbers too, it's just tedious for small numbers. Uh, so we would use this other method if the numbers are very small. But if now we want to go back and do our conversion, let's say 47 again, since we already know what that, the binary of 47 is. This time we're going to do it mechanically by doing integer division on 2, or by 2. So uh, we have 47, and we're going to make a little table of quotients and remainders. And we're going to fill out uh, the row by taking the number that we're looking for and dividing it by 2. So 47 divided by 2 will give us some quotient and some remainder. Since it's odd and we're dividing by 2, uh, we're going to get a remainder of 1. When we divide by 2, we can only get remainders of 0 or 1. But because this one is odd, we'll get a remainder of 1, which uh, allows me mentally, at least this is the way I do it, to see that I'm looking at 46 divided by 2 if I get rid of that remainder. Sometimes that makes that a little easier for me. So if I if I'm doing 47 divided by 1, um, I'm ending up with 23 and a remainder of 1. All right. 
Now, that's the first step in the process. And effectively, I'm going to repeat this step over and over and over again, with my new target being whatever number is in the lowest quotient field of this table, until I get a quotient of 0. Then I'll stop. So now I need to do 23 divided by 2. So that's going to give me 11 with an a remainder of 1. 11 isn't 0, so I'll divide it by 2. That's 5 with a remainder of 1. 5 isn't 0, divide it by 2. Uh, that's 2 remainder of 1. 2 isn't 0, divide it by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1 with a remainder of 0. 1 is not 0, so I'll divide it by 2, and that's a 0 with a remainder of 1. Now, I don't want to divide 0 by 2. Uh, I stop here because 0 divided by 2 will give me 0 forever and ever and ever and ever again. So we just stop. Now, we've got this column over here that's a bunch of remainders. And notice they're all zeros or 1, just like a binary number. Uh, and it turns out, uh, since this thing is constructed like this with the quotient on the left and the remainder on the right, I like to imagine that these are two big wooden trees. Uh, and if you were to hack away at the remainder tree, it can't fall that way. It can only fall this way. And so if this thing falls over, we end up with a bit pattern 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And that's the binary for 47. So let's do that again with a different number. We did, uh, I think, 39 last time. Let's do 39 again. Then we'll do it with a, a larger number. 39. All right. We need a quotient column and a remainder column. We got to do 39 divided by 2. Again, whenever I see that it's an odd number, I know that the remainder will be uh, 1. So I'm mentally thinking 38 divided by when I do this. So 30 divided by 2 is 15. 4, go, 4 into 8, so that'll be 19 with that remainder of 1. 19 divided by 2, again, it's odd, so I know there's a remainder. So I'm really thinking 18 divided by 2. That's 9. This is odd, so it'll be a remainder of 1. 4 remainder of 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2 remainder of 0. 2 divided by 2 is uh, 1 remainder of 0. 1 divided by 2 is 0 remainder of 1. And if we hack the tree and it falls over this way, we'll get 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Now we can double check that that worked since I don't have the old mathematics on the board with me just to see if this is valid. So this is the position worth 1, worth 2, worth 4, worth 8, 16, and 32. So this is 32 plus 7, and that's 39. Now let's do it with an even bigger number to end the video. Because the whole point of doing this mechanical approach is to do it for large numbers. So let's do our friend 1,034. All right, 1,034 decimal converted to binary. We need a column for quotient and a column for remainder. All right, so uh, we can see that the value here is even, so we know we're going to have a remainder of 0 when we divide by 2. And otherwise, 1,034 divided by 2, 517. All right. Not 0 yet, so we've got to divide it. It's odd, so it'll have a remainder of 1. So I'm thinking 516 over 2, that's 258. 258 over 2 is 129 remainder of 0, because it was even. That's an odd number left, so I know I'll have a remainder of 1. Uh, so otherwise, it's 128 divided by 2. So that's 64 with a remainder of 1. Divided by 2, that'll give us, hey, that's a power of 2. That'll give us 32, remainder of 0. That's a power of 2. Divided by 2 will give us 16, remainder of 0. That's a power of 2. 
That'll get us divided by 2. 8 remainder 0, 4 with a remainder of 0. Uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2, remainder is 0. 2 divided by 2, 1, remainder of 0. And 1 divided by 2 is 0, remainder of 1. And then this falls over in that direction. So we have 1 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros, and 1, 0, 1, 0. And that should be the binary equivalent to 1,034. But we'll go ahead and double check it to make sure we did this right. Uh, this position is worth 1, then 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. I'm just multiplying by 2 as I move along. 256, 512, and the last one is 1,024. So, we've got 1,024 plus 8 plus 2, this is 10. 1,024 plus 10 is 1,034. And that's how you convert decimal numbers to binary.